like we're talking some more Star Wars, people. Let's get it on. All right, guys, we're back. Surf Show 24-7 here with a special video. This video is um, uh, an answer for my good friend, John. My good friend, John, hit me up late last night to ask me a, a very important question, a question that kind of took me by surprise. He asked me, Cirque, why do you love Kylo Ren? He asked me that. That's what he asked me, people. He said, Cirque, why do you love Kylo Ren? Because he doesn't really like Kylo Ren that much. Um, he, he enjoyed the movie Star Wars, um, The Force Awakens, but he didn't really understand why I'm so infatuated and, and, and so obsessed with um, Kylo Ren. And um, I wanted to just text him my answer or my reply, but then I was like, you know what? I'm not a good texter, I'm not a good typer. I'm a good talker. I could probably get my point across if I talk about it and give other people my, my reasonings. Um, now, going into this video, just know that there might be some spoilers here and there, but you, we've already had a week, people, so if you haven't seen Star Wars, it's your fault. I'm sorry, let's go. All right, now, the reason why I like Kylo Ren is because he is a character who knows he's a villain who knows that he's not there yet that he's not perfect and he's not in the position where he needs to be where everybody thinks he is and um it just is very fascinating to me you you have a character like him who seems so um so menacing and so dark and brooding and you know and powerful but deep down he's just more of a uh, a messed up kid and who's going through a lot of emotions and stuff like that and um, I, I really you know dug that because it was such a different kind of villain that um, we don't get to see a lot because we're so used to some villains not just Star Wars villains just villains in general in movies that are just so cookie cutter and just so by the basic and they're already at the top of their game but what I like about Kylo is he's not um, he's not at the top of his game. He wants to be at the top of his game. He makes people think he's at the top of his game, but he's not. He's chasing something that's kind of impossible to, to chase, and that's he's trying to follow in the footsteps of his grandfather, um, which we come to find out is you know um, uh, Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker. And that's, that's what really kind of drew me to that character. Um, and what a lot of people don't really, I don't know if they understand or they don't get, is it's he's trying to be Darth Vader with not actually knowing that he's actually more Anakin than Vader. If, if you think about it, he's more Anakin than Vader. Um, and this movie really portrays that very well, that he's more Anakin than Vader. Because Vader, at the top of his game, when, when you first meet Vader in um, A New Hope, he, he's he's calm, he's collective, he's powerful, he's menacing. He doesn't, he, he doesn't have to, you know, um, do too much to get people's attention because pe people already know who he is and people know how powerful he, powerful, powerful he is. And um, something kind of poetic about that. But with Kylo Ren, he, he puts on this facade, and but you can tell like just deep inside, like something's off about this kid. And once you get that reveal um, that, oh, he's just a young kid, he's just a kid, um, no facial hairs or anything like that. Then you understand like why he gets these tension, these these tantrums, and you know these temper tantrums, and he, he freaks out all the time on people. And I mean, I don't know. I just really liked it. Um, a, a thing that John was saying that he doesn't understand because he's super emo. He, like he's like a pretty boy, but he's emo and stuff like. And I agree with all that. I agree with all that. Um, my only kind of my only issue with Kylo Ren or when he once he takes off the mask is that I felt like to distinguish him a little bit more you could have probably 
made him with, put some facial hair on him. That would have probably toughened him up a little bit more. But I think the reason why he's a clean cut under the mask is because they want to give off the impression that he still is a kid and he's still going through these and he's still got he's not like a teen but he's he's young i would say about 27 26 28 somewhere around that 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 age range and i'm 26 and i go through these little teenage tantrum, temper tantrums and these teenage angst all the time and i'm 26 so because i'm still young you know what I mean? So I, I really feel like the um, JJ really wanted uh, to portray that as he's he's clean cut, no facial hair, and he still looks like a kid. He looks like an emo kid. Don't get me wrong. He does look like those kids. Um, and I'm not really making fun because I was one of those kids. I was just the black version of that kid. Um, he's, he looks like one of those kids at uh, when you were in high school and you, you sit with your group of friends at lunch. And then it's just this whole section of just goth kids who are just scary who, who smell like hot topic like you ever went to hot topic and you just smelled hot topic it smells like sadness and depression and box cutters and stuff like that that's that's how they smell so he gives off that look but i, I didn't really mind it because i understood what the story was going for i understood what jj was going for and um, I think he's still a character who, who has so much growing up to do, so much to develop. And that's why I, I enjoy him because he he's not at full capacity right now. He's he's at um, not even 50 percent. He's probably at like 40 percent once this movie uh, takes place. Um, and he probably drops down to like 30 once this movie ends. So he's still building up to that 100% level of Vader, which is uh, very fascinating to me. Um, to, ha to have somebody, because when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about, okay, so we already know that Luke trained him. And Luke was, he was a apprentice to Luke. So Luke, it could have been a moment where Luke told him about his father and kind of just told him not even about Anakin, probably more about like Vader and how Vader was just this this massive of a man and this powerful like god like type of person and it, maybe Luke didn't even tell me he probably heard, heard from Snoke and stuff and then that fascinates you once you find out like oh this was my grandfather um and mo most kids look up to their grandparents uh and their parents but some I know a lot of kids that look up to their grandparents I knew when I was a kid one of my biggest heroes was my grandfather and I looked up to him and I used to want to be like him um so I understood that as um as probably like Kylo Ren growing up hearing these stories of how great and powerful his um his uh his grandfather was and wanting to you know emulate that and wanting to be that um so that was really really cool and that it was just um it, it it just gives that character more like depth um and more you know just layers to him so w once he 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 gets to that moment where he um gets kind of revealed that oh you're kind of a fake from when ray kind of calls him out on his on his stuff and when ray says oh you're just scared because you know that you're not going to be as powerful as vader he he kind of he's kind of taken aback and, and you can see it it kind of it kind of hurts him a little bit because that's buried deep down inside that only he thought he knew and that he was trying to bury and hide and try to not let anybody know but she saw through it because she used the force so once he once she found out that's when you, the layers start to peel back it's like oh okay so he, he he he's just trying to be somebody that he can't be um so that's what drives him but that drives him but that also it also tears him down and that's what's really cool about him is just that he's driven to be as as powerful as vader but he's also um he's also kind of shackled by the fact that that's a big thing to do that's like if you're michael jordan's kid and you play basketball people expect you to be as great as michael jordan that's not gonna happen baby I'm sorry but that's what drives you but that's also that big burden on you so that's the best way for me to put it it's like he's he's 
he's trying to be somebody that he will never be. Um, another thing that John was, you know, was saying that he kind of got bested um, by somebody who just used the force and somebody who who can't even use the force. And when you think about it, I was like, okay, I get that. But at the same time, you got to think about it. And this is what, if with my argument to this, John, this is what. Um, makes him more Anakin than Vader that he doesn't even realize yet is that Anakin in like episode two and three he was very he was very powerful but his power was weakened because of his emotions and that he couldn't control his emotions in certain aspects and areas just like the, the the moment in episode three that we all know that solidifies Anakin's probably fate fate is when Anakin, what are you doing? I have the higher ground. Obi-Wan had the higher ground. Anakin can't do anything. But Anakin's so emotional and so um, blinded by his emotion that he's not thinking correctly. And I think that's how, you know, I think that's how Kylo is too, especially towards the end of that fight with like Rey and Finn and stuff. And you, you still have to think about it like this. After he kills Han Solo, After he kills Han Solo, um, he he immediately gets shot, blindsided, shot by Chewie, either in like the stomach area, somewhere around here. Like, then you everybody remembers this. Hey, so somewhere around this area, he gets shot um, by a bowcaster, and those things can take somebody out. And we've seen that in this movie that though that when Chewie shoots that thing, people usually die. So the fact that he's not dead at that moment shows how strong he is and and how much of the force he has but he does significantly get injured in that moment so at that time he, he gets injured bam all right he's on still on the bridge the first thing he does who does he see he sees finn he sees ray and that's where his emotion takes the best of him so he starts you know going to search for him they get the fighting Finn fights first. Um, he ends up besting uh, Finn, but Finn does get like a lucky shot in. But at the same time, you got to think, he's already been injured. So she can't do too much of this and that. It hurts. I can tell. I, I can tell. So it hurts um, that that moment. And then Finn actually hits him with the, actually gets a, a good chunk of his arm uh, with the lightsaber. So now he's, he's injured on both sides. He still has to fight another person. Who's that person? Ray. Ray. We we find out she's force sensitive. She's really strong. She she's obviously related to Luke. That's my opinion. That's most everybody's opinion. So she's already she's obviously strong. I think she's already been trained before, but she was force wiped. She couldn't remember anything. And throughout this movie, she is um steadily, she's recalling some of the things that she learns, but she doesn't really know. Um. So she she's fighting and stuff like that, and he, she ends up besting Kylo. She doesn't kill him, but she ends up besting him. So you have to you have to factor in the, that moment too. That he's fighting two people. He's already been injured twice here, here. All right. So he he can't do too much, and he's still fighting off emotions, calling Finn traitor, trying to seduce Ray to the dark side and stuff like that and he's not really concentrating on what he needs to do and that's what his downfall was kind of that's what Anakin's downfall is and that's that whole comparison to Anakin and um Kylo so you know th those are my moments of, of like why I think you know he's cool and stuff but I like I said I still think he's he's cool yes he could have got the grizzle look but I think it was a chosen look for him to look like he looked like an emo un uh, un 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 what's the word let's see a very unstable um you know type of person because if you listen to JJ and if you listen to like the directors and stuff and trust me I've been on this movie uh throughout like thick and thin reading everything I possibly could watching every interview JJ says like his lightsaber represents him and most lightsabers represent the the person who's wielding it and his lightsaber is an, an unstable lightsaber 
That's who Kylo Ren is. He's unstable. He's very powerful. His lightsaber lightsaber is very powerful, but it's very unstable. It can go, go off at any moment. It can die at any moment, you know, but it's very powerful. And that's who Kylo is. And, and, and I love the fact that that's why his lightsaber is like that, because he's unstable. And um, I think what Snoke is going to do is he's going to kind of rein him back and kind of bring him back in and kind of teach him to, you know, you got to calm now. You got to kind of think and you got to kind of be um, use your head more and not just think off emotions like how Anakin. I would say I don't know if he's going to bring up Anakin, but it's, it's going to be very interesting if um, Kylo really understands who Anakin was um, when Anakin was younger because um, Anakin was very unstable. And that's what, that was Anakin's downfall to be Darth Vader. And Darth Vader is just a totally different character than Anakin because Darth Vader was calm. He was collected. He was cool. He, he had years under his belt um, by the time New Hope um, came through. So he, he knew how to... You know, well, by that time, Anakin was already dead. You know, Anakin was no more. It was just Vader. So um, he was just a co completely different person. So hopefully, you know, Kylo gets to that moment to where he becomes a different person. But in, in my opinion, I think they're trying to do a redemption thing with Kylo. I think he might die by episode nine, but I think he's going to find a way to redeem himself um, because you, you do see the fact that he is going back and forth trying to, you know, figure out if he wants to be on the light side, if he wants to be on the good side, or if he wants to be on the dark side. So he's been struggling with that. That And um, it was just a great moment. Um, it was a sad moment when Han Solo died. But it was a very impactful moment um, because you can tell that he knew he had to kill his father, but at the same time, he didn't want to. So you can tell he was struggling because those were real tears. People think that he was kind of baiting Han in. No, he, he probably knew Han was there because he's been sensing Han ever since. But he knew Han was there, but he knew that moment, right? Once Han got in his face, he knew that moment. He had to do what he had to do if he wanted to take that next step into becoming who Vader was and becoming more powerful or as powerful as Vader to, you know, he had to, you know, really commit to the dark side. And that was a tough moment because he was still fighting back, uh, you know, fighting with the light and the dark. So I, that's why I really like him because he just has so many layers to his character. Yes, he's super emo. I don't really care. I was an emo kid too. We all have those emo moments. But um, at the end of the day, he still, he looks cool. He's badass. Um, he's got a cool lightsaber. And he, he he's a character that we're going to know for the, like the, probably the next two movies. So, um He's going to have more to show and more to do. And, um, yeah, I'm just super excited for it. And that's why I like Kylo Ren. Hopefully, that gives me some kind of legitimacy to why I like him. If if not, please let me know. Comment below. Um, let me know if you like him. Let me know if you dislike him. Let me know why you like him. Let me know why you dislike him. Um, and thank you, John, for the question. Um, because it turned out for a cool video to, for me to do. So, um, as always, this is The Search Show 24-7. Be easy.